Hi everyone, this is Tablets Preparation and Testing, the Practical Part. This cycle, Cycle 3, represents an opportunity to use all information we learned in the previous two cycles to be able to fulfill the following objective. To do so, in part 1, we will prepare the tablets, while in part 2, we will prepare the dissolution tester and start the test. And finally, in part 3, we will prepare for sampling, absorbance, measurement, and the collection of our data. Now, part 1. Here, as you can see, we prepared all the quantities required to prepare the four different formulae. Keep in mind that we are preparing 10 grams from each formula and these 10 grams will be used to compress at least four tablets from each formula. These quantities or amounts were calculated based on the specified ratio of each ingredient. Also, we prepared the external lubricant, which is 5% weight per volume magnesium stearate in ethanol. It can be also prepared using methanol, but here we did use ethanol. And also we prepared two plastic bags for each formula labeled with the section, the group, the formula, and the diluent. The first plastic bag will be used to prepare the mixture and the second plastic bag will be used to keep the tablets. Please make sure to use the same labeling method we are doing here. You will be evaluated based on this. Now, how to prepare your mixture? First, place the ingredient with the largest quantity in the plastic bag. Here we are preparing formula A and we started with lactose, then the active ingredient, then we are adding the one gram of abyssal and here we will add the starch please use this shown procedure to mix your particles we will keep magnesium CRA to be added at the last the very last stage of the mixing process as you know magnesium CRA is a hydrophobic lubricant and has two unwanted effects mentioned in your effective additives uh, experiment if added from the beginning to the mixture or of its per if its percent was increased over one percent in the formula the mixing time should not be more than 90 seconds one and a half minutes then you have to mix for 40 seconds to 45 seconds to one minute then add the magnesium stearate then continue mixing for now we will prepare at least four different weights four different weights of the formula use it is necessary here to use analytical balance please keep in mind that we will prepare at least four tablets per formula from each formula notice also that here we skipped the uh, sieving um, step in our procedure this step is done to remove any large aggregates and eventually get a representative particle size distribution because it has been done using a relatively large pore size 1.4 millimeter mesh 
then this will never mean that we will generate a very narrow particle size distribution but yet we can minimize it minimize the particle size distribution via removing the large aggregates make sure to apply the external lubricant we mentioned earlier to the compression compression set parts before starting the compression procedure in a good time to allow the drying we cannot use wet compression set dye and punches in the shown compression set the longer cylinder represent the upper punch the small cylinder represent the lower punch and of course the uh, circular part this one with the hole in the middle is the die now allow for the drying and we will show you how the preparation of the other four different formulations now while you are watching Mr. Amid Tahir preparing the other formulations, I will go through some important information related to our experiment. Functions of excipients. A vessel. A vessel is used as dry binder diluent, disintegrant, or glidant. It is highly dependent on the method of addition and the time of addition as well as the percentages or the percent being used. It is usually used between 10 to 20 percent. Lactose is being used as a diluent. Remember, lactose is a freely water-soluble sugar. Starch is used as a disintegrant while magnesium stearate is used as a lubricant. HPMC hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. It is used as a gel forming agent for sustained release. And it is also used in film coating as a film former. But in film coating, it will give an immediate release pattern. While here, when we are adding it as part of the bulk in direct compression formula it will act as again gel forming agent for sustained release dcp dicalcium phosphate is a hydrophobic material yet wettable despite the fact that dicalcium phosphate is hydrophobic but it will get wetted with the aqueous space disintegration media disintegration and the solution media so it will form a disintegrating tablet why a vessel ph1 o2 rather than a vessel ph1 o1 is used in direct compression formulations Notice here we are using pH 101, but because we are doing manual mixing. Because abyssal pH 102 is spray dried, so it is better, it has better flowing or flow properties. Spray dried products has large spherical particles. Why direct compression is not more common than granulation is not more common than granulation even though it is more convenient and less costly simply because if we are dealing with very potent drugs these will have problems in mixing actually it is difficult to per to prepare mixtures with these potent active ingredients and if we did micronization, if micronized, they will tend to segregate. Segregation will occur. While with high dose drugs with poor flowability or compressibility, poor compressibility can be overcome by wet granulation. When binders are added, there will be more intimate contact for poorly flowing drug 
the size enlargement and increase in size uniformity during granulation will be helpful to improve the flow properties. And in any way, if, segrega if segregation happens with the granules, its effects will be milder as it does not happen for the drug particles itself. It will happen for the whole granule with all of its ingredients. The tablets prepared using HPMC as a diluent are expected to show sustained release behavior. Why? As we said earlier, HPMC forms a release a release rate controlling gel layer. Upon contact with water, this will limit water penetration into the matrix and will limit again drug diffusion into the surrounding medium. This is called matrix type sustained release tablet. Formula D was prepared using a diluent system composed of HPMC lactose in one-to-one -one ratio. The release in HPMC lactose system will be faster than in HPMC system as lactose is leached, leached leaving channels. So in addition to being a diluent, it will act as a channel forming agent to increase the release rate in a sustained release tablet, then the overall release pattern is sustained release. It is worth mentioning that there is another type of sustained release dosage form other than the matrix type, like in our experiment. It is membrane release type. These tablets are coated with sustained release coating or water insoluble polymer, of course using film coating. The polymer used for this purpose is with water limited solubility or poorly water soluble polymer. And this coat is known as rate controlling membrane or coat. Again, this type is known as membrane type sustained release. Oh. We will start preparing our tablets again using the hydraulic press. Start with assembling your dye as you can see. First, put the dye on the support. Then, you have to insert the lower punch. The lower punch and our punch have two different endings. We will make sure that the endings or the surfaces with the very flat surface with no round or diagonal parts are facing the powder. Consequently, the tablet as you can see, you can use the upper bunch again with the right direction to push the lower punch to make sure that it reached the end of the die. Pour down your powder, 600 milligrams of the powder inside the die and place the upper bunch in the right direction. Now, how to use the hydraulic press? First, place the compression set to be pressed centrally on the lower polster pressing face. El Masnad. And Lower the top polster or the top cylinder, then again lower the top polster pressing face and turning the lead screw handle clockwise and turn the lead screw handle 
in this machine is it is red in the other machine it is black clockwise turn the lead screw handle clockwise now pull and push the pump handle to smoothly build up the pressure you will feel it to be loose in the beginning but with time as you are building the pressure you will find it tough to move it or somehow difficult to move it after you reach the required compressive load or pressure which is in our experiment 10 km please wait 10 seconds 10 seconds are important to allow settlement of particles under the pressure at the end of wait of the waiting period release the pressure load turn the pressure release handle until it look anti clockwise by one turn again turn the lead screw handle anti clockwise to raise the pressing face remove the compression set from inside the machine notice here that we are already showing you the first two stages of tablet preparation cycle which is filling into the dye second compression and now the ejection or the release of the tablet from the dye this will be done manually how take the dye with its punches and the tablet and place it in the second support with the open center handle the upper punch tightly with with two fingers of your left hand and push the upper punch with your right hand make sure to continue handling the upper punch with your fingers this is done to protect your tablet from breakdown here is a second example the die is placed on the solid support the lower punch is placed the powder are pulled are poured filling of the die filling of the die the upper punch is placed the compression set is placed in the lower poster pressing face center and the upper poster or the top poster pressing face is lowered and the lead screw handle is turned clockwise then we have to pull and push the pump handle to smoothly build up the pressure after achieving the required pressure we wait for 10 seconds then to release the pressure load we turn the pressure release handle until uh, anti-clockwise by one turn again turn the lead screw handle anti-clockwise to raise the pressing face and we remove the compression set then we do the third stage from the tablet cycle preparation which is tablet ejection here is another example i recommend the use of a very smooth small foil paper tin paper to weigh the tablet powder this will make it easier for you to fill it inside the dye the only difference between this machine and the hydraulic press in lab B is the presence of the safety guard. The safety guard must be kept closed at all times when the die set is being pressed. One thing else to make sure of it during the uh, process is you may need to rotate the pressure release handle clock 
wise until it has tightened firmly. One thing else. For those that will prepare their tablets using the machine in Lab B, please use 5KN pressure, not 10. Use 5KN pressure, not 10. This is only for students or sections that will perform this experiment using the tableting machine hydraulic press in pharmaceutical technology lab B. In part 2, we will test our tablets using the solution testing and USB method of acetaminophen tablets. The method we used during cycle 1 experiment 4. The only difference that we will do multiple sampling. So, the sample volume is critical. The very first step is to weigh the tablet that we will test in the solution testing. Weigh it and record it in milligrams. Record the weight of the tested tablet in the specified place in your manual. After doing so, prepare the dissolution tester. Make sure to turn it on before enough time. Make sure to turn it on, of course the heater, to allow the warming up of the water bath. Here we are adjusting the height of the paddle, which is 25 plus minus 2 millimeters using a ball or a sphere this is a standardized ball provided with the apparatus by the supplier the ball is placed in the inside the vessel and the height is adjusted from above using a key This will be done before the practical session by the lab technician. Then it will be ready for you to use. Here we are showing you how we are doing this. The puddles should be tightened firmly. Make sure to clean the vessels and the puddles before starting the procedure. Now fill the medium. The medium is phosphate buffer pH 5.8. It will be ready for you to use in the lab. The medium volume again is 900 ml. And again, we are using the same dissolution method we did during cycle 1, experiment 4. The only difference is that we are doing multi-sampling. After pouring or filling the vessel with the medium, immediately close it. 
and continue doing so with the other vessels. Each group will be responsible about one formula. And finally, vessel number four. Make sure to place around 200 ml roughly measured in one of the back vessels. This will represent our replacement medium. Now, make sure that all parameters are correct in your apparatus. Remember, our dissolution time is two hours. Now, place the tablets inside the dissolution tester. Commence the timing and the turning on of the machine simultaneously. The first sample will be withdrawn after 15 minutes. Meanwhile, prepare yourself for the sampling. Make sure that you are preparing two volumetric pipettes, 5 ml, and again, in this experiment, we will use gravity filtration, the procedure you did previously. Make sure you are preparing the tools in front of you, the tools we are showing you in the video. Each group should have, should prepare a funnel with early Meyer flask, two volumetric flasks based on the group. You should have in front of you three Beakers, one is labeled as waste, the other contains distilled water for rinsing and cleaning, and the beaker filled with around 100 ml of phosphate buffer pH 5.8 with a washing bottle. Prepare your filter paper and wet it with phosphate buffer. Again, you will be evaluated based on your readiness for the sampling and please make sure to prepare all what you are watching in this video each group is responsible to prepare such tools While waiting for the first sample, prepare your UV spectrophotometer. As we did pre in a previous experiment, clean the cuvette with water, then with the blank. The blank here should be phosphate buffer, pH 5.8. By definition, the blank is everything in the sample but the substance of interest. After cleaning the Cubit, fill it with the blank and place it in the right direction inside the UV spectrophotometer. Adjust the lambda and measure the blank zeroing. Remember, the first sample is at 15 minutes. 
then samples will be withdrawn at 30, 45, 60, 90, and 120 minutes. After 15 minutes elapsed, withdrawn the sample from the very right position you learned during the previous dissolution experiment. Handle the volumetric pipette horizontally and replace your sample. Replacement should be done using equivolume from a fresh medium kept at the same temperature. Remember, we placed 200 ml of phosphate buffer in separate vessel. Use 5 ml volumetric pipette because the sample size here is 5 ml and make sure not to touch the medium in the vessel where we are testing our tablet. This will contaminate your replacement pipette. Now filter your sample and after complete filtration measure the sample absorbance. Remember to dilute samples with absorbances more than 1.2 with a suitable dilution factor. Then repeat the same for each sample. Meanwhile, prepare a calibration curve using the same procedure you used in experiment 4 cycle 1 except you have to use here for 48 milligram acetaminophen to prepare the stock solution and also meanwhile waiting for the other samples measure the weight and thickness then the hardness then you have to measure weight thickness and the hardness of each of the other three tablets you prepared record your results one of the most important things during the solution is to observe the behavior of tablets as you can see for example at this time we are observing complete disintegration of tablet A, disintegration of tablet B with a turbid medium, intact tablets C and D with some erosion happened in tablet D and this is expected. Observation should be done at different times in between the sampling points. The only reason behind the replacement step is to maintain constant volume all over during the experiment or the testing. And this is important as part of experiment optimization or testing optimization.
Notice the shape of the tablets at the end of the experiment. After two hours of the dissolution testing, Now, after finishing the dissolution test and knowing the basic release patterns, what are these patterns? Immediate release pattern, modified release pattern, where we have two examples or two different release patterns, sustained release and delayed release. Your homework is to explain what is enteric coating, how and what are the reasons to use enteric coating. What is the expected release pattern from each formula? Lactose, freely water-soluble diluent, it will cause the immediate disintegration of the tablet, as well as DCP, while tablets containing HPMC, hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose, will have this gel layer that will limit the penetration and diffusion, the, that will limit the penetration and the diffusion of the disintegration and the solution medium. Here are some questions for you to answer. We did discuss these questions during the experiment videos. Special thanks to Mr. Amid Tahir, the lab te technician, Ms. Rand Nassar, Mr. Sajjad Faraj, and Ms. Sarah Jaluka. Thank you all.